right now. Pleased to be joined by Maryland head coach Mark Turgeon. And Turge, it was a uh, a turnover like everybody else, right? A lot of turnover. Uh, you bring in guys. You better get used to it because it's going to happen every single year. Uh, but I thought you did very, very well in the portal. I don't know how much time you spent in the portal, but you, you, you certainly the time spent was well served. Yeah, you know, you're right. It, it you used to have a team where you're like, oh, we're going to be good for the next two or three years. And it just doesn't work that way anymore. Guys uh, move on to the NBA or transfer or whatever. And it's just it is what it is. Um, yeah, we, we we had a good year in the portal. The year before, we weren't, weren't as lucky in the portal. Um, and we were a little bit down last season. But this year, we were successful. We actually, you know, we're in the portal, got some pretty good players, but they're a little bit better than I even thought, right? And uh, all the way through, even our last one, Xavier Green from Old Dominion, he really fits a great piece uh, to our team and what we're trying to do here. So, yeah, with the portal was good to us. We have a lot of new guys uh, on this year's roster, but it's it's refreshing. And it's a after coming off COVID, it's really a, a really good feeling around here. And the, the energy is really you know, great around our program right now. So when I was out there a couple of weeks ago watching uh, pick up, um, your guards stood out to me. I mean, your guards, just because they're older. And I didn't realize that, that Ayala and Fats have known each other. So there's some synergy there between those two and hopefully how they're going to be able to play together, right? No doubt. And they've both been through it. Um, you know, Eric's had a great career here. Fats had a great career at uh, Rhode Island. Uh, Fats knows he doesn't have to score like he did at Rhode Island. There'll be games where he scores like he did at Rhode Island, but he doesn't have to do that every night. Um, you know, he's really gotten better um, over the summer and fall and just trying to get used to the way we coach him. And he's really improved. He's improved his shot, uh, was a, which was a concern of mine. He's really made that look look good. And uh, then, I, you know, Eric, Eric has no ego. Eric's been through it. He's played with Anthony Cowan. He's played with great players around him. And, and so he, he welcomes Fats because it takes a little pressure off him. He doesn't have to handle the ball. He can just think about scoring, which is something that he does a great job of doing. So, yeah, they're, they've really hit it off great. Um, and all our guys, all the guys we've blended into this team of our, our older guys and, and guys that were here have welcomed them in. And the guys came in with no egos and, and just happened to be a part of Maryland basketball. Yeah, I feel like your team fits together well, right? You've got good balance. On the perimeter, up front, you bring in Q, which I thought was a huge, I mean, huge in, in multiple ways. Yeah. Uh, huge addition because of what he can give you. You didn't have last year, right? A rim protector. Well, so last year we started, because really Dante Scott's a three, and we were playing him at the five, and Hakeem Hart's a two, three, and we were playing him at the point. So we were just trying to make it, you know, we just figured out this is the way we have to play, and, and we figured out how to get to the tournament and win a game. But, um, yeah, we, our pieces fit. We have – a couple really good centers, a couple really good fours, a couple really good threes, you know, twos and ones. We feel we feel really good. We feel like we have some depth. Um, we feel like we have some young talent that's just going to get better and better. Um, and so there's a lot of good pieces uh, to this team. And right now our 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 energy, our positive energy, our chemistry is great. Um, but most teams are that way right now this time of the year. Uh, but I, I really feel like this, this team will stay that way. And, you know, Q was a great addition, um, committed early, you know, right after the season ended, which was terrific. Only had to recruit him for like eight or nine days, which was nice. Some of those times those things can go on. COVID helped us because kids couldn't make visits, um, move a little bit quicker. But um, yeah, he, he and he's a great kid. And, and now I got Danny Manning here working with Q and and Juju and 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 it's going to be really good for Q. And he's got a lot of things to work on, a lot of things to get better. He's been very coachable. Um, there's a lot of things that we've been on him hard about, even though he's a really good player, almost averaged a double-double in the Big East. Um, but uh, we feel like there's a lot of things he can get better at. I felt like walking away, um, one of the X factors, there's a couple, but w was James Graham, right? Yeah. I mean, he he when he's on, he is tough to stop. I mean, he can make contested three after contested three. I'm not sure you you want him shooting those shots all the time, but he can make them. Is he kind of the X factor on this team or what, what are the things that probably need to happen or, or the people that need to step up in order for you guys to make a run in the tournament? Yeah. First of all, I'm, I'm proud of James. James has totally changed his body. 
he couldn't guard me when he got here. Now he's guarding Dante Scott, you know, trying to guard really good players. Um, so he's really improved. Um, you know, I just don't want James dribbling nine times before he shoots. That's my whole thing with him. So we've worked on it. He, he's getting better. He wants to be a player. Um, and he realizes that. But he, he's a good one. I, I think Ian Martinez is an X factor, too, yeah. for us. He's going to play multiple positions. Uh, I thought I was getting this kind of raw athlete, um, you know, just from watching film. And then he was hurt all summer. And I'm not sure if he even played the day you were here. He didn't, he didn't do much. Uh, yeah, but yeah. he has been a real pleasant surprise. Has a great feel for the game. Plays at a really good pace, um, and just takes what the game gives him. So he's an X factor. Xavier X. He'll be an X factor because he gives us what uh, Daryl Morcel gave us with great defense and length and toughness. Which means he'll uh, play for you if he can yeah, guard. He'll yeah, get on the floor. Yeah, he'll guard, and then you got this kid Juju uh, Julian Reese, who's a freshman from Baltimore. He's a lot better than I think everybody's was anticipating. He's got some Baltimore toughness to him, so gives us great depth. And then a guy like Dante's just you know he took another step uh, from his freshman year to sophomore year to where he is now. He's taking a huge step. He'll get back to his normal position, playing on the perimeter this year. Um, and uh, yeah, we we like our depth. We like uh, all the guys that uh, we have and. We just got to keep getting better. There's a lot of guys that can get a lot better. And I, th I think we're going to be a much better team in February than we are today. So I know uh, a lot of people give you crap because you're, you're almost too honest. And some <laughs> people say, you know, negative at times. But, but I feel like, listen, you don't know how to BS. You don't. And that's the beauty of you. Maybe not um, for other people around you. But uh, for the media, we love you because of that. Um, what do you worry about with this team, Turch? Oh, you know, whether we're going to shoot the ball well enough, uh, we do have some good shooters uh, being consistent. Uh, that's really my biggest concern and and just handling expectations. I think as a coach, I've been through it all so I can help them. There's some new players here that haven't been at Maryland and just, you know, handling it, uh, planning those big games. Um, I like to thank Eric and Dante and Akeem Hart, who we haven't talked about. He's really, really gotten better and bigger and stronger. Um, with some of the veteran guys and a veteran staff, we can handle those moments. But that's really just living up to that and and, and being able to do it. But uh, I like this team. I, I I like our depth. I like our you know our synergy and everything about us. So um, it's been fun to coach. It's been a summer was fun. Fall's been great. Uh, they're willing learners and, uh, and they practice hard. I mean, they're in the weight room, they go hard. They're in, you know, individual work, they go hard. So it's like, yeah, it's, you know, I also, and then I have a little bit of the power this year. Like last year we had, I had to look behind, you know, didn't have Nothing. many guys to play this year. I like, all right, this guy's screwing around. I can sit him next to me and put somebody else in. So that's, that's a good feeling as a coach. And, and not a lot of disparity. I feel like from one to 10. Right. I mean, I feel like like you just said, you know, you're, you're deep. But to me, again, a guy like Julian Reese, if he comes along mm -hmm. and, and matures quickly, right, and learns how to play and, you know, play hard all the time. I mean, he, he's yeah. a guy that could crack the starting lineup by the end of the year because of his talent. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So like Q's proven himself, Dante, Eric, Fats, they've all proven themselves. Hakeem, to a point, has proven himself. It's it's it, it's that next five guys that Ian Martinez, um, Pablo, Juju, James Graham, Xavier, um, those guys. I mean, that's that's a pretty good team right there. If those guys can grow and get better and uh, yeah, then we have a chance to be really good. It's it's I guess my biggest concern is as a head coach is how many am I going to play? I'm going to play eight. Am I going to play nine? I'm going to play ten. You know, I think we have 10 guys that are worthy of playing and um, we just got to figure it out. I, I like that. If you look at our schedule in February, I think we play every three days. So it's nice to have a deep team. Uh, well, when it takes care time. of itself. Usually, yeah. you know, the numbers kind of, unfortunately, yeah. they, they, they take care of themselves, especially last year with the COVID year. But, yeah. you know, they, they find a way of getting it to a point where you're you're playing eight or nine. Yeah, no doubt. no doubt. All right. Yeah. Turch, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, good seeing you a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully uh, I'll see a lot more of you in, in the next few years if my daughter ends up going to Maryland. And yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck this season. Appreciate it. All right, Jeff. Before we move on, 
Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. All right, that was Maryland head coach Mark Turgeon. And now for more on the Terps, who, who else can we turn to other than uh, than my guy, right? Scott Van Pelt. Listen, I, I feel like you're like a fourth coach of, of Maryland. And I don't know if you go out and recruit for him. I don't know if you're dropping dimes NIL yet, but you got to. I mean, <laughs> listen, you, you got to step up to the plate here. And, and they got some talent coming in, but you got you to gotta keep this thing moving. I'm ready to cheat when need be. I, I, I'm joking, uh, but at the same time, like with NIL, it's actually a pretty fascinating conversation because I think the people that, that who were cheating, now you just, you, you already have identified who's ready to pay money. Now you just have to find a way to funnel it, quote unquote, legally. But uh, no, I don't coach. Turge, Turge is kind. He'll let me pop into practice here and there. I was there actually the, uh, the other day. Um, Look, he knows the score. He knows I'm just out here cheering for him, rooting for him, like like a lot of Turp fans. And he, he's just patient enough to to humor me with conversation from time to time. You're, you're like the voice of reason now for Maryland fans with regards to Mark Turgeon, which is crazy. I, I never thought I, I'd be that, but you are. Well, I try to be. Uh, there is a there is a, a real passion in that fan base, which is great. It can it, like fire is good. It can keep you warm. It can also burn you up. And, and the, 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 the lack of sort of acknowledgement of what they've done under Turgeon is the part that I try to give voice to. I mean, they won a tournament game last year. All right. Did they, they got, they got trucked by Bama. Bama shot the lights out and they got beat. All right. Well, they won as a 10 seed over UConn. And, and I just push back on when I hear fans talk about Maryland like they have fallen off and I don't, I'm not trying to shoot at programs, but look at like a, a Wake Forest or a St. John's or somebody yep. who had success and sustained success. And then you, you drop off. Like it's not, it, they've been top four, top half of the big 10 almost exclusively since they've been in it. And I feel like I'm a, I'm like, I'm the crazy person when I point that out, but it's not my opinion, Jeff. It's a fact. Yeah. Um, now, this is where Maryland fans point out postseason record. We get it. Of course. Only been to the only been past one the first weekend once. And that's entirely reasonable to yeah. say you should you should not want to do better than that. You should do better than that. A hundred percent agree. So the things that, that I think the, the most vocal uh, detractors of Turgeon point out, I'm with you on wanting to make a run, but you know this. Nobody wants to do that more than Turgeon does. The question is, with what they've got this year, what can they be? And that, that's what's really interesting, because they played the portal game well. Very well. Um, getting Fats from Rhode Island, getting Q from Georgetown, getting Martinez from Utah. That's the real wild card. He's got, he's got some bounce and, and is an interesting guard. Like, he's a guard that can attack the rim that they haven't had in a while. Like a Cowan or a Mello. I mean, excellent guards, but those weren't go to like Steve Francis style, like attack the rim and try to dunk on people. Um, and then you try to figure out what what all you have coming back. Eric Ayala, 
leading scorer last year, Dante Scott, who I saw at practice looks the best he's looked physically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's gotten in a, a lot better shape. I just was impressed. I know you were at practice recently. They got a lot of guys. Like a lot. They had, they had like five or six they could play last year. Right now, it looks like they got eight or nine, ten different dudes that could play some minutes. But the question is, when you bring in that many new guys, how does – you got a puzzle. Like, do those pieces fit together? Right. I don't know. I don't know yet. I kind of think they do because, again, I, I think you got a backcourt that knows each other and a y'all and fats, right? They, they, they know each other well. I was talking to Eric about that at practice or a pickup. And they've got history together. Fats has to become a better decision maker. Like, and he's got a, he's got a sacrifice. And, and so I think you've got those two, you've got a big, which you didn't have last year at all. To me, the key is going to be like a James Graham. Like, can he be a guy? Because when I was watching, when he got hot, Scott, he got hot and nobody can guard some of those contested shots that he can make. And he looks the part, but again, who, who, you know, does turd sacrifice maybe some defense for some offense? That's not typically been him over the years, but this team has a lot of pieces. As you said, it is like the ultimate puzzle. Of who are you fitting together? What's your best five? And you can play a lot of different ways. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. You, you talk about fats. Cause I, I, when I saw him at practice the other day, we were kind of laughing at, about, about the, about the building and what it's going to be like. And I was like, you were in here. And he goes, yeah. And he started smiling because they had a good Rhode Island team that had Maryland down double digits. And then Maryland flipped the switch and they ran them. Um, and I said, yeah, the good news is they'll be cheering for you this time. I think what he gets, Jeff, uh, is that at Rhode Island, particularly last year, he was asked to do everything. Too much. And so he looks around here and clearly has more at his disposal as the, as the guy running the show than he had um, in Rhode Island. So is he, I, I don't think he'll try to do as much because he won't have to do as much. You mentioned Graham. He was a young man that came from Wisconsin, came early last year, which I, I when I was in high school, you were either a junior or a senior. Like you didn't just decide in the middle of your junior year, I'm good. Right? You didn't want to like leave I, your boys. Well, I didn't want to leave my boys. And I don't think I had I had checked the boxes on the classes I had to take. But he, <laughs> ar- he, arrived, er- right. he arrived early, had a chance to work with Kyle Tarp, their strength and conditioning guy, and, and really kind of reinvent the body. Um, and now this year is, is ready to, to, to take on some kind of a role. Um, I, th- I think, look, like a lot of schools, you have guys that make decisions. And I, you and I had this conversation back and forth in the spring, like in, with, with Aaron Wiggins. If he comes back, does does he play himself into the first round? The, the the opportunity was in front of him to do that. But there are there are many young men that get to that point where they're just ready to, to start trying to earn um, money, whether it's G League two way, uh, and that's what that's the path he'll have to take. And so all Maryland fans will wish him well, and at the same time they'll think, man, you know what what might he have made this group? But you can't play you just you can't play that game. Because like the people in Kentucky or Duke or wherever, be like, yeah, cry us a river. Right. Uh, you, you lost the one guy. Uh, but those programs are way more wired to do the turnover thing each and every year. That's really not the way um, Maryland's wired. But I mean, again, they, they brought in some experienced people. Um, they brought in some, uh, they, they kind of got a person for each spot that they didn't have in, in terms of a new guy. Yeah. And so uh, you've got a lot of, of people what are what are the roles become and can you keep peace with the new people because each right if you and I come in together I'm looking at you I'm like all right he's this he's he's pretty good at this and that but I'm better at this and that and I I want my I want to get my run right and and if I don't I'm looking at you look at Q look at Q Scott he comes in and to be honest he got the ball some at Georgetown so he's Mm going to be probably expecting I want to do at least what I did at Georgetown and there are a lot of mouths to feed on this team. I, I think Ayala is the guy that honestly has to be the leader. And, and he came right over to me at a pickup. We started talking. I'm like, all right, he's got that in him. I agree. To be, to be that vocal leader and call dudes out when they're being more about me than team. I totally agree. And, and totally agree about him being the guy. And, and, and that's, it's, that's fascinating to watch. Uh, yeah. And Maryland largely has been a program 
that's been a four year program. I mean, sure, Maryland's lost people uh, through over time where, you know, sticks, you got to go. You're a top 10 pick. I mean, you know, uh, Kevin Herter, you're going you, to, you, you explode and become top 20 pick. You got to go. But, but for the most part, I'm talking through the years, and I go back to like a Gravis Vasquez, one of my all time favorite Terps, who stayed that last year, became ACC player of the year, got into the first round, and whatever else. That was the cool part from him from a financial standpoint. But in terms of who he became as an all time Terp, as a leader, as the guy, yep. you saw it. You, he came in with some swag for sure. Oh. But, but, but by his fourth year, I mean, he was, you know, my guy. Senor Huevos, okay, he was the, he was the general. He yeah. was running shit. And so to see Ayala now, and it's the same kind of thing. If I go by, you know, have a conversation or whatever, you see the growth and confidence. Um, he's, he's really worked on his body. He looked the best he'd looked since he's been here too. Um, we're all allowed to grow up, you know? I mean, I think back to my goofy knucklehead days and you, you mature over time. And, and when you're part of a team like this, by the time you're the old head in the room, that's your job. And if you're lucky enough as a coach to get talented players who stay, then you reap the rewards of having a talented, experienced player. And that's exactly what Ayala um, is going to be. I think being able to play the two with Fats at the one's interesting because he's he, he is a point, but he's a bigger point, which allows him to kind of, you know, use that. I don't want to say bully, but that's kind of what they did to the UConn guards in the tournament game. He was just bigger than the guys checking. And so you, you can just kind of patiently work, get your angle and try to get your shot. So, um, you know, he, he's obviously got a clear and defined significant role. There's other guys that got to figure out, you know, how much of this food do I get to eat? Uh, Eric, I guess to eat as much as he wants. He gets a second pot. <laughs> so before we get to kind of your, your projections for this team, mm-hmm. Here's a, here's a question I've always we, I don't know if you and I have ever talked about this, but where Maryland fits as a job as a program in the country, you know, Maryland and Georgetown are two that I get pushback from all the time. I've always said like Georgetown I think is a top twenty five job in the country, and people think I'm crazy. Non Georgetown fans go crazy on me, and I'm like just because they haven't done it over the last ten years doesn't mean it's not a top especially now with the the new practice facility. Um, Where do you think Maryland fits? If you had to rank Maryland nationally in a, in a, in a range, I'm not asking for a number because I understand. Put it this way. Uh, And people can eye roll. It's higher than people maybe believe. And, And a lot of that has to do with where you sit. And it, being in this part of the cup, first of all, it's a basketball school. Right. All right. You, every, you can say it. I mean, at certain schools and there are very few, but there are some like Ohio State is Ohio State a football school. Yes. But basketball is really good there. Michigan is at a football school. Yeah. But basketball is really good there. Uh, there's some where they're, they're almost equal footing in terms of their national uh, relevance and perception. Maryland basketball comes first. And Xfinity Center is now old. I mean, it, it didn't feel like it was that long ago that it was brand new, but it's still a good facility. They're, they're going to get their brand new practice facility. That's going to happen in the next year and change, which has to happen. You know, you, you got to have all the bells and whistles. Yeah. That'll, that will help elevate it. But I mean, if I say it's a top 20 job, there'll people will go, no, it's not. And I'll say, I, I think it clearly, is. Clearly, listen, it's not even debatable to me that it's a top 20, Scott. I, I honestly, I might put it closer to 10 than 20. I've done this where I, the, the, the thing is you start going through it, right? And you, and you, you go blue bloods and then there's a lot more of them, right? Then I mean, cause it's the, it's the Carolinas and it's Kansas for sure. Yep. The, the, those you understand. Yep. And then you get into like, all right, well, like where's Louisville in that conversation? Ahead you know? of, ahead of Maryland. Ahead of course, of, of course. I, but, but I'm saying when you we'll start give, going we'll down. give one. Here's a good one. Here's a good all one. Right. Your alma mater against my alma mater, Arizona and Maryland. If I'm picking which job I want, I'm going to pick Maryland. Well, and that's you, the Arizona guy, saying that. I, I, I mean, and I mean, look, what Western basketball got a big bump last year with Gonzaga and UCLA, and, and I'm happy for Mick because um, there are people that didn't think that you know that that fit made sense, and 
It didn't take long. Uh, well, a lot of people. I, I, I'll raise my hand on that and go, wow, that's an that's just an interesting Westwood and Mick Cronin. All right, let's see how that goes. Oh, well, you know, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of toughness, a little bit of F you. I mean, it for look for there's pl there's plenty of perception of West Coast Hoopers out there that could use a little bit of that in their life. 100%. And okay, so so what was I talking about? I don't know how we got to UCLA. Oh, I'm thinking about West Coast, Western yeah. basketball and Arizona for years was seen a certain way. And that's, you know, with loot. Yeah. And then when they got Sean and then people thought that would be one thing. And then there was just whatever happened there and how it all kind of comes to an end. Um, I don't know what their facility situation is, but I mean, West, pe West Coast people, Western people are going to be like, there's no way Maryland's better, but you're the one saying that it is. I, look, I just know that th the one thing that hurts Maryland right now in terms of the, uh, of the appeal of its job is that at a lot of these big time schools, if, if push came to shove and it was time to get somebody, yeah. the question would be, how much do you need? We'll write the check. Maryland money wise is still, is still dealing with the end of its ACC time when it, when they had too many sports and they had a ton of debt and that comes into play when it comes to, do you have, do you have the money to go get, because here's what it comes down to when it comes to the job. If the job came open, who could you get? And I remember, you know, at the time when, when Gary retired, that there was, you know, there was thoughts of, you know, could you entice a Jay from down from Philly? And that was before they'd won. And remember what his perception was before he'd won was, that he, was that he couldn't. Right. And there was thoughts that Sean Miller, who had far that more East Coast. You and I know, hey, you and I know how close that was to happening. We'll leave that, we'll leave that there, but it was, it was close, pretty, pretty close, but that didn't happen. And so then, and so then Mark Turgeon has been here and has, and has had a, a, su a successful run in terms of getting to post seasons, but not going on the kind of runs people want. But when his time comes to an end, whenever that is, who can you get, who can you get? And so I think in order for your job to be seen as that big a job is who can you who do you get? Like the Indiana job search was fascinating because I mean, they're talking themselves into right. Brad Stevens right now. Right. Uh, and, and the, the Woodson hire um, and who he surrounded himself with and the people that they've gotten early on has to be seen as a win. So okay? far, yeah. so far, but haven't played any games. Right. Right. But, but the Indiana people were like, they talked themselves into Brad Stevens and then they're, and you're and Brad's Indi not going hit. Listen, Brad's not going to Indiana, to Maryland, to Arizona. None of them. No, maybe, maybe. I would have thought maybe Duke or Carolina, but they both came open. Right. And look who they got. And that's not a knock on uh, Hubert's my guy. And John Shire's done incredibly with, with what he's gotten already. But I th that was fascinating to me that when, when, when those jobs came open, that's who you think, oh, you get, they can get Brad Stevens. Well, they got Hubert Davis and they got John Shire. Um, yeah, alums, I mean, listen, alums with ties, no doubt. And I'm not, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that that's the one that everyone said, Oh, well, you could get Brad Stevens. Well, they didn't. And Indiana got Mike Woodson. So when, who could you get when the job came open? That tells you how, how much juice your program has. Um, well, there aren't the, a lot of guys that are going to move either. Let's face it. Like Scott Drew is probably not going anywhere, whether Arizona right. goes after him, Maryland, Indiana, it doesn't matter. Chris Beard just went to Texas. There aren't a lot of dudes that you say like, "Are right, they're hey, next?" I, I totally agree with that. But I'm just, I'm just saying, as I'm talking out loud here, all the Indiana, UCLA, Duke, Carolina, those are on the top whatever jobs. And look who their hires were: Cronin, Woodson, and two guys who've never been head coaches. So that to me speaks to what the landscape of college coaching is right now. Cause Mark few, he's not leaving. He's no. good. No. Jay Wright. He's not leaving. No. He's good. Tony, was, Bennett, Tony yeah. Bennett's not going anywhere well, other than would, the NBA. Those guys, the only place they're leaving for is the NBA and they've turned down those like Jay Wright's turned that down. So um, you're not getting an elite level. You're not. That, and that's where you're right. When you go back, flip it back to Turge. It's like Maryland fans. Be careful what you wish for. Couldn't agree more because you, you, I, I, I you see the way, you see the way, uh, you know, the, the Maryland communities, like the, the, the chat room community is like, well, we'll get this guy, this guy, and this guy. And you're like, you won't. No, no, you won't. Right. And then, and then 
if, if you run someone and then you find out who you get, and I'm not saying any names because I don't want it to be seen like I think you're, that that person is good enough, but you get somebody and they go, oh, that's, that's who, that's who. But we that's what I did with Mike Woodson when they ran Archie Miller at Indiana and they missed on Brad Stevens and they missed on Chris Holtman. And then you end up with 62 year old Mike Woodson, who's never been in college. I said to myself at that point, it was a fail. Now, He's kept his staff. He, he, he kept one guy. He hired two more good guys. And he inherited enough talent that they're going to win this year. So a lot of it, again, Juwan Howard, same thing, right? Inherited a good team from John Beeline. So he was did. able to win out of the gate. Yeah, he did. But he but Juwan is one of those rare people that has he, – he, he, checks, he checks a lot of boxes in terms of what do young people that are going to go to college want? They're probably not super excited. If, uh, the guys that want to go to the league, they're not worried about, hey, what kind of sociology department do you have? No, they'd like to know, can you get me to the league? Well, Jawan can say, I, I, I did there. I did that. I was a guy. Then I made it to the league, and then I grinded out a distinguished, lengthy career. Then I was on benches in the NBA. Yep. And now I come back to my alma mater, where I was part of a still iconic group. It's rare. And he's not old. That. And he's not old, Scott. No, That's the other no, thing. for like, sure. But I'm just saying, they're, late. yeah, no, of course. But I'm saying there are very few. Think about his era. Like his era is Leitner's era. I mean, but they still have juice with young people. Fab Five still have cultural relevance. And so Juwan is, I think, one of one as it relates to that. Alma mater, pro, iconic. And so he inherited uh, a good situation from coach Beeline and is able to go out there and has, has crushed it with, with a bunch of big time players. So uh, it's, this is actually, this is not at all related to Maryland. It's just the topic itself is really interesting about jobs, who you can get people that once you're made Bennett, few, yeah. you're not moving. Jay, yeah. th there's what could possibly like the only thing I could think of get Jay right out of the main line is if somebody puts three commas and eight figures together. And even that. I'm not sure he, he'd go. That's what I'm saying, because Jay's a smart enough guy to recognize you don't try to be happier than happy. I got it wired here. No, he'll go got, NBA is the only place. I just talked to him and, and asked him that question. And but why do it? Assistant, yeah. He's been an assistant for Pop through the national team and USA Basketball. And I said, you know, has that scratched your itch enough? And he was like, yeah, but it, it's not about that. He's like, I love Villanova. Like I, and he does because Jay can do what he wants at Villanova. He doesn't want to go to Kentucky. There's a reason Jay Wright, Tom Izzo, Billy Donovan all turned down Kentucky at one point in their careers. They don't want to be in that fishbowl. And to be honest, Scott, it's not Kentucky, but Maryland's a little bit of a fishbowl in terms of the expectations that are unrealistic about the program. Is it not? A hundred percent. You, you, you have people that, and, and when you win one, it's the, it's the best thing. And then it, it's the blessing curse because on the one hand, it proves you can do it and that it's validating, but then it becomes the bar by which you judge yourself and you, 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 you know, you think, well, we did that. We sh we should do it again. Well, it, you might not ever. I mean, look, my guy, Stanford Steve, that I work with, he loves, he's, and he's the best, as you know. And he's like, Maryland fans, what? You all are the worst. Since you guys had a, you had a two-year window where you went to back-to-back -to -back Final Fours, and that's it. And you walk <laughs> around and act like you're Duke, Kentucky, or Kansas. You're not. And I'm like, that's true. That's true. But because of where it is, because it is a basketball first school, because you have facilities, because you have done it, you know, you, I think NC State deals with that to a degree, right? When you did, oh, they did it with, they did it with Sloan, they did it with Valvano. Yep. Well, I mean, similar. The, the fact that Valvano did it in, in the most impossible of circumstances doesn't matter because they did it. Um, and so you think that you think can, they be can do it again. They expect well, you can do it again. And they've done it once more than Maryland did. And granted, it was a long time ago. It doesn't matter. So yep. again, these, all of these things are, are what make, this topic uh, important around Funny. here. And, and it's, it's great fun. It's great fun. Yeah. I, I didn't even want to go this route. This was not the intention of our conversation, but when you and I get going, exactly. I have a tendency to do this. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's finish back on point a little uh -huh. bit of 
this Maryland team, if I said to you, kind of gun to your head, where do they finish this year in, in the Big Ten? After that, we know it's a crapshoot. Like, we have no idea. Get in the tournament, who knows where you end yeah. up going. But where does this team, do you think, fit within a pretty good Big Ten? All right. Before I answer, here's what I here's the thing I'd say. I feel I think Purdue is really good. Really good. I think Ohio State's going to be really good. I think Michigan. It, I, I, I'm interested to see they got new they got new talent. I, I don't know the new talent because I haven't seen it, but the fact that Hunter stuck around and I know that was close. I think he told you that. Yeah. You know, it, it got close there at the end. Um, old school, tough nosed kid in the, the, in the middle that can be the guy. Uh, they're really good. Um, and then I mean, Illinois lost so much. But they but got a then, point guard in the big. Exactly. But then Kofi's like, whoa, okay, so he's sticking around. Like, they'll, they're they going to be good. Yep. Um, I, I feel like it's top, I don't know, top five-ish. But then, you know, I haven't said Michigan State yet. Right. And right. And, and, and after last year with, with what they went through, yep. I, I would expect Tom's team to be better. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody that's going to be good. And I'm not doing it intentionally. You're forgetting that's going to be really good. I think that's, I think you covered kind of the top. It's I mean, Michigan. Indiana could be good. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, Iowa lost so much. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard Iowa's to... going to be down. Uh, Northwestern's Northwestern. Nebraska's down. Uh, Rutgers is going to be okay. Penn State's down. Wisconsin's the one that, Wisconsin and Iowa are the two that will take significant steps back from where they've been. I, I, right. I mean, Davidson will play there until he's my age. Uh, I'm convinced of it. And he'll do something to beat Maryland. And I'll tell, I'll just send curses to Andy Nurth, like that kid, that young man, that adult, that senior citizen, whatever he's, whatever it is, he's going to be out there battling until he's my age. I'm convinced he's, he's of it. going to be playing longer than Robbie Hummel. He might. Uh, AC Earl, uh, Tyler Hansborough, right. all the people that spent a hundred years in college. I, I guess, I mean, it feels like top five ish. Yeah, that's sort yeah, of that's, I agree. That, yep. and, and then the question is, the question is, uh, how how high in that are you on the are you fighting to stay on the back end of it, right. or are you good enough to be up there in the middle where you're trying to elbow your way towards the very top? Uh, I, I haven't seen any of the preseason sort of coaches who picked who where. Uh, give me Purdue. I'll, I'll, I, tell, like, I'll tell you. Hold on, I did I, a I did a I, little kind of straw poll, and Maryland. Somewhere, probably the bottom end of what you're thinking, behind Michigan State, most of them had. Okay. And, and, and some of them had them behind Indiana. So you're talking probably, you know, five to seven is where most people, I think, have them. You have them on the higher end ahead of Indiana, ahead of Michigan State. I, I don't do know. Too. I mean, maybe. I, 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 yeah. I, it's, there's a lot. There's, a, there's the blind spot here is just sort of what – how do the pieces, how do the pieces come together? It's guard play. It's guard play. It always is. It's well, guard it was, play. Right. Last year in Wiggins, you had a guy that you, you give him the ball, particularly late. Right. Um, make and, a play. And he, he's make a play and get a bucket. But uh, you have I, that with fats. I mean, he can do it. He's just so, as you saw the other day, he is small. Not a big kid, but I mean, Cal Ka wasn't a big dude either. Right. Um, and, and he, and he made a lot happen. I, yeah. I like Purdue the best. I like Williams. I like Ivy. Um, the the nine foot tall kid in the middle, Edie. Edie. I think I think I really like his game, and I I love his composure. Like I watch him, and he's what I don't know when you're when you're that big a human. I, I number one, you rarely have that kind of touch. Like at the free throw line, he shoots like a guard, and he never changes expression. I don't know why I don't know I don't know why I expected him to be the kind of guy you could go into like get mad wow. or something, but he is unflappable. And uh, I mean, him and Williams together. I love Williams. That guy is nasty. You're, if God, you're that he's... big, don't you have to go to Purdue? <laughs> it's a right. It's a it's it's a rule. Right. I think uh, where is he? He's from the. He's from there, isn't he? He's from. I don't remember where he's from, but man, they, they are. Oh, he's good. from Toronto. They're... He's Canadian. I beg your pardon. Um, Purdue could win. Purdue could win the whole damn thing this year. They could. Now, I'm not saying they're going to, but they've got a guard and they've got two bigs. Agreed. And, and pr probably something somewhere cosmically for what happened to them in that Virginia game. They got to get. There's got to be some get back yeah. because. There's no way Purdue had Purdue had the lead um, 
Virginia has got the ball. They're facing the wrong direction with like two seconds on the clock. And then he is Kihei, right? Yeah. Clark yeah. To, made one of the all like how that kid didn't panic and just shoot from half court. I'll never know. Ridiculous. But but he kicked it ahead and they made a bucket. That was one of the best games I I can ever remember. Ever. ever. Carson Edwards, what do you have? Like 50? Yeah. I mean, he just went off. We had oh, he, Go we ahead. did a podcast, me and Hummel, with Tony Bennett the other day, and, and Hummel asked him about it. He's like, what was your confidence meter at the end of that game? And, and Tony looked at us, and he was like, yeah, it wasn't very good. Well, you know what's amazing? And then this is – now I'm just wasting everyone's time, but we're just two guys talking about basketball. If, if you go back and you look at the end of the Purdue game, the end of the Auburn game, and the end of the Texas Tech game – Oh, my God. All three of those – all three of those – could have, should have, would have gone the other way. I mean, if they lose the Purdue game, you're like, well, yeah, I mean, how, how are you going to win that? Auburn, you're down two. You got to, you know, you got to make something happen. A guy gets fouled. He makes them all. And they're down, they're down three to Texas Tech after the Texas Tech comes all the way back. Then they get a three to tie it. I mean. No, it's the craziest run ever. The, the craziest part is nobody's written a book yet on that Virginia run. That was someone should, because all three of those games, on top of the fact that they were trying to bury the narrative from the year before about what happened right. um, to that. You know, what's, you know, what's really cool is when, when uh, the Tampa Bay lightning won their first of the two back-to-back -back cups, their coach is John Cooper and they're in the bubble and he's a guest with me and we're, we're getting ready to tape with them after they've won yeah. the, uh, the Stanley cup. And I'm looking at him and it's like one of those grainy feeds, like a, like a, a YouTube video. And I said to him, I said, is that a Virginia hat? And he said, yeah, yeah, because, see, they had been the one seed the year before, and they got swept in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Wow. And his lesson to his guys the whole year was like, look, we were the one, we lost in the first round, but this is what Virginia did. Yeah. And so, and he didn't know Bennett. Here's really? this hockey guy That's cool. with, a, with a Virginia hat using them as – the example of what, what they could be. And they ended up winning a title as well. But I mean, that Virginia runs amazing. And that's what happened to Purdue along the way is why I think if the basketball gods exist, yeah. that at some point, and, and plus that whole fan base and Mackey, like that, that's an awesome, oh, awesome. awesome basketball place. Listen, I, I can't wait to get uh, my daughter out there uh, to college park for a game. We, we went out recently but I, I got to get her back. Uh, Little Birdie tells me she might have liked College Park. Huh? She did. She loved it. Now, now, part of it too. We, you know, the tour, everything. Uh, journalism program's great. The 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 big uh, game changer might have been Scott that uh, she got to a party while she was there. So <laughs> that might have helped take it over the top for now. So we'll. we'll, the, we'll the, see. The young people in College Park have always been pretty good at that at that part of the college experience. I'm sure is, you were. Listen, I'm, is, I'm, I'm sure you were. It's why mine lasted as long as it did. I I spent quite a while there in College Park in pursuit of higher did education. You, wait, did you beat my record at, at Arizona? What? How many? I was five and a half at Arizona. Uh, I'll just say this: I I beat you. I beat no, you. No, you didn't. You did. I did. Come I did. On. Yeah. It, I I was there for quite a while. Six. Yeah, ish. <laughs> now I no, did not know this. this uh, yeah, tremendous. yeah. No, I was. Uh, I mean, like, some other time I'll tell you about the semester where I got a zero point zero. Um, that happened. I almost flunked out at Arizona. I was, I was. I think a technicality kept me in. But hold on, I could find somewhere, somewhere in my office. I act. There's my diploma's in here somewhere. I got it. I got to the finish line. But it was, uh, it was, it was a journey. It was a. Uh, not an epic journey. It was, but it was a journey. An unforgettable journey. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, All you right, know what? You. This you're the best, man. Like, well, I, like what, this this proves we, Maryland can be the on ramp, but you you and me are always. Uh, I don't know how we got where we got, but we got no there. idea. No, yeah. no idea. But if we can do it, yeah. anybody can do it. Yeah, right? That's a that's a yes. That is it. Kids, look at us. Look at these two nincompoops. We did it. Uh, love you, my man. Love you. Right, right, Great right back at you. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again during the season. Right on. Look forward to it.